if there was a recipient for biggest dunce cap wearer ever, Daniel Cameron will be a shoe in to be a nominee. If he would win, that's debatable considering how many dunce cap wearers there are in the establishment and quite possibly the world, but he would definitely be in the running. So Daniel Cameron was supposed to attend this particular event where I guess he was supposed to speak at. And the thing is, this is how, you know, this guy just doesn't read the room because apparently this event was supposed to, was hosted by some very staunch dub S's. But what's crazy about the story is, is that it took a PC Republican to talk him out of going to the event and basically called him out on it. Now, if y'all remember, I recently, the last time I talked about Daniel Cameron was when he got the nomination to run for governor for the state of Kentucky. And they were telling him and his constituents, the PC Republicans were telling him, you know what? You're probably not going to win because the governor that they currently have right now, who's the Democratic governor, he's most one of the most popular governors in all 50 states. So good luck. This is like the second time. His constituents who are PC had to tell him about himself. What have I told y'all when the wake up call start to happen? It's going to come from those whose ass they kiss the most. Sorry about that. My sensitive ass car alarm remote. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read this article that's coming from News One. It was posted on J July 11th, 2023. It says, do y'all remember Daniel Cameron, the Kentucky attorney general who proved himself to be 100 percent useless in bringing justice for Breonna Taylor? You know, Cameron, the sunken place Trump humper who in May won the Republican primary in the Kentucky gubernatorial race. Well, what if I were to tell you Cameron was recently set to attend an event hosted by a bigoted radio host with a track record of making explicitly racist remarks. And it took a fellow Republican who is white to talk him out of it. That's just the first paragraph. This guy literally was about to go do a radio interview with a staunch dub S and you can't tell me he didn't know this person was a dub S and it took another white person who was a Republican to talk him out of it. Like it's like this guy does not get it. It's like all the bells and whistles can go off and he has perfect hearing, but he just chooses to turn that sense of hearing off as well as turning off any kind of sound logic he wants to be in with them people so bad that it's them same people who ask he kisses on a daily basis that are pulling him from the ledge i'm saying i would be like this if i were them i would just let him fall off the ledge because he, apparently he doesn't he, he doesn't learn his lesson According to the Lexicon Herald ledger Cameron said in June that he can't wait to go to Eric Dieter's annual Freedom Fest event now you might not be familiar with Dieter's especially if you're not a fan of racist radio hosts who call themselves provocative when they really mean white supremacists so just to catch you catch some of you up here's Dieter's in 2011 apologizing for saying if you want to conquer an African nation send white women in pot then white explaining that the joke was justified because every black guy on my flag football team went out with lived with and was married to a white woman and smoked pot now I'm not going to play the video but that's just a gist of what he said. And this is who he was going to go sit down with. And here's a much more recent video, which I'm not going to play. I'm just going to read the transcript of Dieter's complaining that you can't watch a television commercial now that doesn't have either a gay, a black Asian character in it. And it's messed up. Continuing, Dieter added, blacks are 13% of the population and it's not about equality they want to control. The minority don't want equality they want to take over. For the record, according to Forbes last year, white actors accounted for 72.5% of people who appeared in TV and digital video ads despite white people representing less than 60% of the population. Then, of course, there's the indisputable fact that white people have for the vast majority of America's existence overwhelmingly dominated every pillar of popular culture from TV to film to broadcasting to, you guessed it, advertising. But listen, a white conservative Republican being blatantly racist is about as surprising as cold weather in Antarctica. So let's get back to the part where a black man appeared to need convincing that attending the event of a loud and wrong racist wasn't the move. To be fair, it was a white conservative Republican, Northern Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey, who appeared to publicly shame Cameron into changing his mind. 
In videos across social media channels where Dieters has regularly posted for years, the former attorney and aspiring politician has used the N-word, used the homophobic slur, and claimed that blacks want to control everything, among other races and offensive comments. This plays into a trope about Republicans, and I'm disgusted and discouraged that Republicans in Kentucky are going to show up to this event, Massey told the Herald Leader in a recent interview. Massey said that Cameron made a grave political mistake in first planning to attend the event and personally advised him not to go. The congressman's 4th Congressional District covers the entirety of Northern Kentucky, a key battleground in Democratic Governor Andy Brashear's 2019 close win over former Republican Governor Matt Bevin. I want Daniel Cameron to beat Andy Bashir this fall, and I think he's putting that all in jeopardy by showing up at this event. The national media is going to have a field day with this, Massey said. Here's the truth. While Massey is claiming that Cameron's sharing a stage with a slur-slinging bigot who, apparently allergic to melanin on TV, plays into a trope about Republicans, the reality is it's not really a trope. It's a demonstrable fact that today's white supremacists ident identify politically with the GOP and vice versa. Here's what I wrote last month when I passion when a passionate Trump supporter was charged with hate crimes for allegedly harassing his Latino neighbors and a black motorist with racial slurs and violence. Why were white supremacist protesters holding flags with swastikas alongside flags in support of Governor Ron DeSantis outside of Disney World earlier this month? Why do KKK members keep showing up on Republican campaign trails? Why is former KKK Grand Wizard D David Duke, who has run for office multiple times as a Republican, crediting himself for rhetoric spewed by the ex-president and ex-Fox News propagandist Tucker Carlson? Why is racist Buffalo shooter Peyton Gendron an apparent believer in the same great replacement theory or white replacement theory often touted by Carlson and other white conservatives? I'm not saying all conservative Republicans are white supremacists. I'm not saying that today anyway. I'm just saying white supremacists tend to be conservative Republicans. There's just something about MAGA and the GOP that neo-Nazis find inviting. Well, let me just also insert in here that there are some that are in that Democratic Party as well. They're just covert with it. Who this person is talking about, the author of this article, they're talking about the more overt ones, the ones who are out there with who are not afraid to show their, show their fangs. Anyway. Cameron's campaign was questioned about the Dieters event in September in Massey's remarks, and conveniently enough, the campaign suddenly had other plans. As it turns out, we're going to do, be doing an other campaign events that day in another region of the state. We plan to campaign in northern Kentucky. Often between now and November 7th, the Cameron campaign told the Herald-Ledger, Cameron continues to be an embarrassment, and we still want justice for Breonna Taylor. So that's the whole article uh, right there. Yeah, Daniel Cameron, he is a lost cause. And I can't wait for him to lose this election. I'm crossing my fingers that he actually does lose because this guy is absolutely horrific in more ways than one. And like I said, he just he just appears to be a person who just walks around without a, a brain in that head of his. As big as that noggin is, it's just hollow. You knock on it and it just echo just bounces off of it from from the inside but yeah this guy he it it took a white republican someone who's on his team maybe not on his team per se his campaign team but someone who's in his party i should say to pull him by the coattail and say look you don't need to be going out there with this dude do you know who this guy is you have to have known who this guy was and the thing is even if he didn't know who he was, who the hell is on his team to tell him who this who this is? Because usually before you go do these type of interviews, you have to research who you're going to talk to or when you're going to these events, you got to know the atmosphere. You got to read the room. You got to know who it is that you're about to go and have conversations with to know what type of person you're dealing with here. But he was just willingly ready to go and do this. I'm telling you, if his campaign fails, it's going to be solely on him. His team will play a part, but it's definitely going to be solely on him when he, when he loses, because I'm I'm claiming that he's going to lose. I don't know what this Andy Bashir guy is like, but we know about about uh, Daniel Cameron. And this guy is no good whatsoever. And if he continues to trip up and fall on his face, and make it even flatter than what it already is, then so be it. 